one was rejecting me. No one wanted me. Do I apply to Imperial or do I apply to UCL? This video is going to talk about the whole process. <laughs> It's Pearl's back with another video and yeah, as you can see by the title, today's video is going to be all about how I got into UCL to study medicine and yeah, basically just my whole journey. And when I tell you I've been meaning to make this video for a minute, like for so long, but I've been procrastinating it. I actually have because I'm a perfectionist and I wanted it to be a certain type of way, but I've just got to a point now where I'm like, you know what, Priscilla, like, behave, like, just make the video. So yeah, I guess here I am. I've also got a couple DMs to make it as well. So I'm like, you know what, let me just do it. And like, it only makes sense because my whole channel is about medicine, <laughs> my lifestyle, vlogs. So it's only right for me to show how I actually got here. But yeah, let me stop talking and get straight to the point. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my whole process and I'm just gonna state that obviously it's different from person to person. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about what worked for me really and I'm gonna go right from the beginning when I first started the application, right the way through, through work experience, GCSEs, A-levels, UCAP, BMAP, personal statements, interviews, literally right the way through. So if you wanna tune in and find out just a little bit more about me as well, continue watching this video and I'll also cut the video into sections so if you want to go to a specific section you can just go there instead of like you can go to the part that applies to you but yeah just a story time of like my whole process and how I got here and yeah so this first section is going to be all about work experience I'm not gonna lie I'm one of those people that wanted to be a doctor from when I was a kid like don't ask me why because I actually don't know I don't come from a family of doctors it was just always a dream of mine but I'd say the point when I made the educated decision that you know what I actually want to study medicine and apply for this was on my work experience placement so I did two placements one at the end of year 10 in a pharmacy and one at the end of year 11 in a hospital in the orthopedics department but yeah, so my placement in a pharmacy, it definitely showed me that like pharmacy was just not for me because I always kind of said, you know, I want to do medicine, but like maybe if medicine didn't work out, I would just go into pharmacy. That was kind of my mentality. Like, I learned a lot from it, but it definitely kind of cut out that option, which was, I guess, kind of good, you know what I mean? Because if I hadn't done that placement, I wouldn't have known that. And then my second placement was at a hospital in the orthopedics department. This is when I, I, I go through phases where I want to be so many different specialties, but this was when I was in my, I want to be an orthopedic surgeon phase. That placement, it was good. Like obviously it gave me an insight into the realities, the reality of life as a doctor, which wasn't cute. <laughs> just being in the hospital, working in the team, having so many people around. Like I was just like, this is the vibe I want like on a day to day when I have a job in the future. It was just like, it was exciting. Do you know what I mean? So like that kind of propelled me and I was like, yeah, you know, medicine is what I want to do. If you want to apply to medicine, like you do not need to get work experience in a hospital. It is not the be all, all end all, if that makes sense. Like, try and get work experience in maybe another healthcare profession, profession so you can compare it to medicine and then kind of justify from your own experiences why you think medicine is the right career for you. Or just try and get it somewhere that has transferable skills because you know getting work experience placements in a hospital is hard but to get that hospital placement i don't know how many people i called i don't know how many times i got put through to hr and i'd even tried to get that placement at the end of year 10 and they just said no they said contact us back in like a year or so so i kept that contact and i contacted them back that year later in the summer even with the pharmacy placement everyone was rejecting me no one wanted me i literally had to go on foot to different pharmacies different dental practices and like hand in my like cv or whatever it was at that time like if you're struggling to get work experience or anything like that like don't worry if you, if you haven't got connections it can be a struggle but yeah. sometimes i was like should i just do dentistry instead because people talked about dentistry having a better work-life balance and initial better pay as well and trust me i actually tried to force myself down that pathway like i i did 
but it wasn't me that placement in the hospital made me realize you know i know where my heart is and i just need to just trust trust the journey trust the process and see um where i end up with that i kind of knew from time that i wanted to do medicine so i wanted to take more sciencey kind of subjects at gcse stage it doesn't really matter that much like what you take but i'm just gonna say what i took just if you guys want to know so um i obviously did the standard ones maths um english and then i did triple science i did geography spanish latin french rs and then um, for the maths or advanced maths, I don't really remember what it was called at the time, but yeah. So like those went pretty decent. We thank God, we thank God. That was kind of the precursor for the next step, which was my A-level subjects. Initially, I did four A-levels. I did biology, chemistry, maths, and Spanish. And then year 12, at some point, I dropped Spanish. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Spanish was actually one of my favorite A-levels. But the issue was, a lot of my time was going into Spanish and that meant that I was neglecting, let's say, biology and chemistry a little bit, um, which wasn't good because I knew I wanted to study medicine. You literally require certain grades in biology and chemistry. Yeah, so I made the decision to drop Spanish and honestly, it was the best decision I made because when I dropped Spanish, my grades in my other subjects started to increase. Even in my school, like doing four A-levels, they gave you <laughs> barely any free periods and stuff. And for some people that's fine, like if you can manage four A-levels, that's great. But I just got to a point where it was just like, I don't even need to be doing four A-levels. Like why, <laughs> why am I doing this to myself? And I just felt like I can pick Spanish back up at any time. And also the way the A-levels taught for me, I just, I wanted to become fluent, you know what I mean? And I was like, there are so many other ways I can become fluent without actually taking the A-level and adding extra stress to my life. For like little things I did was just like volunteering at a care home. You know, like you do like your Duke of Edinburgh and your NCS, which I don't even think I ended up talking about in the end, but that was just me. <laughs> like I did dance, I did piano till grade five. I did netball as well, I did netball debate as well. Just a disclaimer before I get into the section about personal statements, I know that this may not be that relevant because I think, as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, they have been scrapped and it's going to be more of like an answer and question system now. But once again, I'm just discussing my journey and how I got here. Also, some of the ways you may answer the question might be similar to the content you would put in a personal statement, so I guess could relate. But <laughs> so, yeah. year 12 summer. So my year 12 summer consisted of two things, and that was my personal statement and the UCAP. Obviously, I was a bit lucky because it was locked down. I couldn't really go outside anyways, so I could just sit down and focus on those two things. So I'd say I started my personal statement around just after my year 12 exams. Yeah, I wanted to focus on my year 12 exams because obviously they use those exams to give you your predicted grades that you're gonna apply to uni with. Um, and then after then, that's when I started like planning my personal statement and reading up on it and like starting my drafts, not heavily, but like lightly, you know what I mean? Just starting putting things together. So with the personal statement, I remember the structure I used was basic int introduction of why I went to study medicine. Then I talked about my work experience placements. Then I talked about any like extracurriculars volunteering that I'd done. Then I did a section on like any scientific research or anything extra I'd done. Um, and then I did my conclusion. Every medical school, every different university is looking for different things. Some unis may be more focused on the work experience you've done, whereas other unis may be more focused on the scientific research or reading that you've done. So I think do definitely look at websites and see, you know, what do they want from me? And then just try and think of areas in your life where you've displayed those skills and things you can talk about. And, and if it's not the website, try, you know, we got, we got the internet. The internet, there's a lot on the internet, whether that's looking at videos or TikToks of maybe people that go to that uni. Personal statement is actually all about reflection, reflection, reflection. Like, don't just list a hundred things you've done. The thing I found is that I had like quite a few things I've done, 
but like if I talked about every single little thing there would be more breadth but less depth if that makes sense so some things I literally had to cut out things that I didn't feel like added value or they were adding less value so that so yeah don't feel the need to add every single thing that you you've done yeah i'd say i spent about three months on my personal statement i had about 10 drafts and i don't know how many people i got to read that thing anyone i could find like i actually had to drop shame if you have to dm someone dm someone like <laughs> you know what i mean um but yeah i think my biggest problem was just being concise like as you can probably tell i talk too much and that is translated through my writing as well so cutting down to get to the to fit in the word count was a struggle and a half the infamous uk this was my least favorite section of the whole process oh i was stressed like this is the point when the medicine process starts to get a bit difficult and it's kind of it becomes differentiated from applying to other degrees that's what i'm going to say about the ucat every time i think ucat ucat equals medify medify equals ucat obviously i'm just talking about my own experience and what was the popular resource at that time i know some people do swear by and use the 1250 ucat questions book as well so Medify is similar to the format of the actual exam. I wanted to do it at the end of August. I feel like that's the best time for, well, the most popular time for a lot of people because it's like you have time to prep, but it won't be when you've gone back to school and you're juggling so many things. But end of August was all gone. So my options were either I'm doing the UCAP when I get back to school or I'm doing it next week. And I had not started prepping, so <laughs> it was gonna be when I go back to school. Using the UCAP book, the 1250 book at first, and I feel like that's what I used for most of it. And I feel like the UCAP very much tests the speed at the end of the day. And I'm a bit slow. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna be straight up. Like I'm a bit slow. Um, and I was just used to using pen to paper. And I got Medify close to my, um, test day so I started using, using Medify and it was for me I felt like the book helped me understand each section which was really good but it didn't help me with the speed of it and I'm not a speedy person I like to take my time <laughs> do you know what I mean and think and give a proper answer got my UCAP result and it was okay like I don't remember the exact number but I think of the percentile at that time it was very much average so i remember i was literally just like crushed started prepping i think six to eight weeks before this was the hardest point of the process for me because it was the first time not even just in education but in my life where i had worked really hard for something and it hadn't gone my way my mentality had always been if you work for something if you work hard it you'll get out what you put in and this was the first time where i thought you know you won't always reap what you sowed. And what that meant for me is you need that required a competitive UCAT score. What kind of cut out of the picture for me, which was hard. I wasn't that happy, but I was lucky that most of the unis I wanted to apply to were BMAT unis. So it wasn't like the be all or end all for me, but it was annoying because of two things. Um, number one, BMAT had to be sat after we had already submitted our applications. So obviously I've just done this UCAT and it hasn't necessarily gone amazing. So I'm like, okay, well, what if I sit my BMAT and my BMAT doesn't go amazing? But at the point I do my BMAT, I would have already selected my unis that I want to apply to. It was risky to apply to BMAT unis, if that makes sense. And this UCAT had kind of made me doubt myself a little bit in terms of like, can I actually do well in the BMAT? And number two, because it was like the first medical school kind of thing I'd done, it just, it made me doubt myself. It, it gave me like imposter syndrome. I remember I, I was really questioning like, can I actually go through this whole process to get the first hurdle? It wasn't even amazing. Um, and yeah, it was it was kind of hard to like keep going and you know, continue with my statement and everything. But yeah, it, it's not an easy process, I'm not gonna lie. So I was predicted two A stars in A with two, one A star in maths, one in chemistry, and my A in biology. So I could pretty much apply to anywhere I wanted based on my predicted grades. Um, but obviously, as I said in the last section, my UCAT wasn't fantastic. 
what that meant is it was a bit difficult when it came to choosing unis i'm not going to lie medicine is all about applying to your strengths for example if you know you have a really high ucat score apply to unis that you know favor having a high ucat score because at the end of the day you just want to get as many interviews as possible because getting into medicine anywhere is, is hard you know i'm happy with my gcse's i'm happy to do grades are decent um i think my personal statement is okay i think the main thing was for me was like the ucat so i was like i want to apply to places that favor those other things so i said previously i wanted to apply to mostly bmat unis but then there was that issue that the bmat was going to be sat after we'd already chosen our unis so i had no idea how i was going to do on the bmat and if i did really badly and i applied to all bmat unis i would have kind of messed myself up you know what i mean in terms of getting in anywhere so i didn't know how many bmat unis to apply to versus upat unis and everything then came the question of which bmat uni am i going to apply to because i wanted to apply to quite a few I'm to imperial or ucl um and here's the thing, and I'm gonna say I do love my uni, I do love UCL. But in the end, I settled with literally only applying to one UMAT uni because my UCAT had scared me so much that I was like, if the same thing or worse happens with my BMAT, I, I just don't wanna take that chance. But my dream uni when I was in school was actually Imperial College London. Yeah! I don't know I, I just from year nine onwards I'd say like that's where I wanted to go because I kind of saw it as like you know it's a STEM uni science only uni I just saw it as like the I don't know just where the scientists top people go but then it came to this decision and I was like okay do I apply to Imperial or do I apply to UCL <laughs> the light outside is really it's doing a lot <laughs> just take a second so, yeah do i apply to imperial or do i apply to ucl so i had to weigh up a lot of things so number one you know, imperial is only stem and ucl is stem plus ucl is everything do you know what i mean every subject and i was like do i want to be in a stem only uni i don't know so that was that was one factor number two in terms of medicine so both medical courses require you to intercalate which is to take a year out to do a different degree but i preferred the range of subjects that ucl had over imperial obviously imperial does have a business or business management one that could be kind of cool as well um, for people that want to explore that side as well but like ucl's range for me was just larger and yeah and UCL had um, student selected components where they allowed you to do languages and one of them was Spanish. So for me, I was like, I can literally pick up Spanish again, which was a great pro as well. Third thing, which was literally the deciding factor for me, um, was how do they actually look at the BMAP when assessing your application? So UCL had a more holistic approach. So they'll look at the BMAP in conjunction with the rest of your application and then make a decision as to whether it's enough for you to have an interview. Whereas Imperial had BMAT cutoff scores. <laughs> so you can already see where this is going. So literally if you miss, the, so there are three sections of the BMAT obviously, literally if you miss one section by 0 0.1, they won't look at the rest of your application, you're cut basically. And I was just like, do I want to take that risk? I actually don't know. And like I did deliberate about it or deliberate over it for a long period of time. Then I just was thought, you know what, yeah, like I I wanna stay safe, number one. And number two, like the more I looked into UCL, like the more I thought it suited me actually, which is a bit crazy because like, I kind of dismissed UCL because I was like, it's so close to home. I don't want to live at home and go to uni. It, 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 it might sound like a stupid reason, but at the time it was very valid. I was just like, I don't want to be that close to home. But um, yeah, I just saw it and I was just like, you know what? This UCL thing is actually looking, it's looking a bit cute, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I actually ended up applying to UCL instead of Imperial. So all I remember about the BMAT is that the timing was horrible. Like I remember I had just finished um, submitting my personal statement like a couple of weeks before. Um, I was sitting, it was literally at the same time in the same week as I was sitting exams in school. 
and obviously as i've said repeatedly i was the year that got affected by covid so all our tests mattered because we didn't even know if we were going to be sitting our a-level exams so all these little exams we were doing in school we kind of had um an idea that what if they use the, these grades to also determine our final grade so it was kind of important you were doing well in each individual test as well so i just remember that i was so tired and drained from this whole process compared to the ucat i spent a lot less time on it because i had a lot less time i was at school i was busy i was doing other things honestly i'd say i spent like a couple weeks um practicing for the bmat so i bought the 700 bmat question for this blue book that says preparing for the BMAT. And I kind of read through the structure of the exam. And I was like, you know what? I feel like this is a bit more suited to me. And it's science-y and decision-making and then an essay. So it didn't seem that bad. So I was like, you know what? Like, let me just spend my time when I went back to school focusing because I had my UCAT to do and then I was focusing on my personal statement. So I said, let me do that first. And then once I've done that, I can go full force on the BMAT, which is what I did. I preferred the exam so much more. I actually felt like I had time to think when I was answering the questions. And then the essay, I don't know, you know, I don't really like writing essays too, too far. And thankfully, the BMAT actually ended up going well. So I only actually needed my BMAT for UCL because I only applied to one um, BMAT uni in the end. So the unis I actually ended up applying to in the end um, were UCL, Nottingham, Cardiff and Liverpool my fourth. My fifth choice was Manchester and I literally just put pharmacy because I did not know what to put and I didn't want to just put biomed because everyone puts biomed and I knew I didn't want to do biomed but I didn't want to do pharmacy either but whatever. <laughs> I know I just put something completely random. It's an interesting one because I actually um, surpassed the cut off scores for Imperial for medicine in terms of the BMAT so I was kind of just sitting there like wow like I should have just believed in myself and applied to Imperial as well. But I didn't. So it was it was like I was really happy to be back one well, but at the same time I was like, oh man, like I should have applied to Imperial as well. But it's fine. I was like, it's okay, like hopefully this will be enough um in conjunction with everything else to get me an interview at UCL. This time period was stressful. It consisted of a lot of waiting just waiting because I feel like with every other section it was like bang 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 and then you get to the point where it's like okay now I just need to wait and see if I've got an interview but it's like should I be preparing should I not be preparing because I don't know if I've got one yet but then if I do get one I want to be already prepared so it was just a really weird period and I think the most annoying thing about applying to medicine is that you have to submit your applications in October, whereas everyone else has to submit their university applications by January. But people will submit their applications for other degrees and they're getting replies back the week later, a few weeks later, maybe a month later. You submit yours in October and most people I know you're getting responses back in from like December onwards, maybe some even in Feb, in March like it's it's crazy and then obviously there's the student room where people like to distress like when I say I was on the student room all the time looking at people asking has anyone heard back from this uni like I got all A stars at A levels and GCSEs and I got full marks my you got my BMAT and this place doesn't reply to me like so many bots on there but so I'd say of all the sections I was least worried for the interviews in terms of the actual interview itself because I felt like okay you know what just get me an interview I feel like I can talk and answer questions that's fine but I was more scared about actually getting the interviews which was I took a break so after the, the BMAP I literally was just like okay cool it's just a sitting and waiting time because I didn't want to, I've been going bang, 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 bang with every single section. And then I was like, you know, I'm a bit burnt out. Um, so let me just take some time. And I was just in that mindset of if a place, if a university does give me an interview, they will probably give me some time to prepare. So yeah, I just chilled with that. Obviously everyone's different. Some people may have started prepping as soon as they finished their meeting. Yes, yeah, so in the end, I ended up receiving two interviews, one for UCL and one for Liverpool. I received my Liverpool interview first and then received my UCL interview literally the day after and let me tell you this much yeah once again I was not clued up 
um, I remember it was one random day, I don't remember the month, but um, I got an interview from Liverpool, but it was a system where you had to go online and like book the day and time that you wanted it. So I remember I received it in the morning, I was happy, like, you know what I mean, so excited. Then I went out, I went on with my day, and then I came back. And I was like, yeah, let me, let me book this interview. Little did I know, <laughs> there were slots and there were days. And obviously the days that are further away get taken quickest. So by the time I got on that um, Liverpool website, the latest date they had was in three days. Literally three days. I remember I literally felt like crying. I was like, no, like, no, like I hadn't started prepping. I didn't even have my interview books or anything yet just because I thought they're not gonna reply to me in a really long time so I've got time those next few days hmm it was stress I was very lucky it came at a time where we were in another lockdown so I was at home so I ordered the interview books and honestly I don't know how much I slept in those three days I was working long long days and it was annoying because I had school as well so I do my school you know nine to four and then I'd be just doing the interview all evening until I don't know what time I slept. And then obviously the next day I received an interview for UCL, but luckily by the grace of God, I think they gave me a week and a half. Or was it two weeks? It wasn't like I was preparing an interview for both places at the same time. Like I did Liverpool and then I focused on UCL. They gave me a specific date, so your interviews on this day. The key thing when it comes to interviews is just knowing what is going on in the NHS at that period of time what is going on in healthcare, what are new advancements in medicine or a new, a new advancement in medicine that you could maybe talk about, have you read anything scientific recently? And then obviously the, the ones that are like about you, your teamwork, um, your compassion. I was really lucky because my Liverpool interview almost served as a mock, my UCL interview for one. So I feel like I've done a lot of prep for Liverpool in that short space of time. So I could just kind of do a little bit every day coming up to UCL because most of it had been done already. Talk about my UCL interview and how that went. Liverpool interview, like I came out of it and I was, I was like, okay, you know what? For the prep I've done, I'm okay with how that went. Like I didn't walk out and be like, that was amazing. Like I think I aced it. But at the same time, I wasn't like, it was bad. I was just kind of in the middle, like, you know what? I did what I needed to do, I did what I could, like hopefully it was enough and that was that. Um, so then I had my UCL interview. liked the format of the interview, obviously I can't talk about specifics and do I even remember all the specifics because it was like three years ago, <laughs> two years ago, I don't know, but with Liverpool it was straight away when it was your interview time, you enter a room and you're in a room and you're, you start being questioned straight away. With UCL in the morning there was like an introduction by I don't even know which member of staff it was but you know they talked to us a little bit and told us a bit about UCL and told us to you know be calm relax you got to this stage and then we had our interviews and then even after the interviews we then all got put in a room it was on zoom by the way we then all got put, got put in a zoom chat room and we got to hear from students that already went to UCL and it was just chill and it was just it was a chill experience like I went in obviously like really nervous like this is UCL or like medicine interview like scared but the way they approached it made me really calm and like comparing the two interviews i came out of the ucl one and I'll be, i'm not gonna lie like i felt good i was like you know what that was that was, that was decent like at that time ucl was panel interviews so it felt very much more like a conversation whereas i know with mmis they can just feel a bit detached <laughs> going from station to station I was happy with how it went, whereas the Liverpool one was like very high stress, straight away they're questioning you, questioning you, questioning you, whereas UCL they did take time to, you know, calm you down and just, you know, bring you back, just bring you down to earth, do you know what I mean? Um, which was nice. So yeah, I definitely preferred my UCL interview to my Liverpool interview, but then again, you can argue it's because I was more prepped for my UCL interview as well. And luckily both interviews went well and I got placed at UCL and I got placed at Liverpool. So I found UCL and then I put Liverpool as my insurance university. But yeah, UCL, I'm gonna say something because I remember on the day of our interviews, they told us, okay, um, so there's gonna be a specific date when they get uh, send out the decisions of whether you've got a place or not. 
and they said that there's this form that you're going to get emailed um, on the day if you get a place that you need to fill out. So I remember like, cool, it was a random day. I don't know why I was at home, but I was at home. Um, and so I got an email from them, but it was an email of the form. But I didn't have any acceptance email, any congratulations email. So I was a bit confused. So like, <laughs> in my head, I was like remembering. Like, first of all, because you know, it's been a while since interview, I was thinking, why are they sending me this form? And then I was like, wait, didn't they say on the interview day that if you get this form, you fill it out that you've got a place? But then I was like, wait, like there's no acceptance email like with it. And yep, so I waited a few minutes to see, okay, is an acceptance email gonna come with this form? But nothing was coming. So I was actually just sitting there. My mom was even in the room as well. So I was thinking, do I tell my mom? But then I don't want to tell her like, yeah, what they said this form means, just in case it was a glitch in the system. And maybe they sent the form out to everyone. I, I don't know. So I was actually just sitting there like nervous, everything. I was like, what, like, what is going on? And then they finally, they finally decided to send the, congratulations, you've got a place at UTL Medicine. And so I was screaming my family was so happy i was so happy like it kind of just felt like this whole journey which started with work experience in year 10. you know like i got the plays obviously i still needed to do my a levels and get my a level results but now i could just focus on that rather than the 100 other things that come with the application so yeah and then that takes us to the last section which was me setting my a levels so obviously i was the year we got hit by covid so i didn't sit the standard a levels that everyone had sat in the past so we had center assessed grades so yeah it was such uncertain times i remember Obviously, everyone wanted high grades and everything but they couldn't give everyone high grades like it was just a really competitive time let's say the year before in a certain department only three students had gotten an a star they couldn't now give 25 students an a star because it looked like something's going on here they're giving <laughs> grades that aren't fair so um they kind of had to match the amount of grades that they've gotten in previous years so in some departments if in my school only two people had gotten an a star it was like which two people are going to get the a star this year or three people or, you know what i mean um so it was it was yeah it was a really stressful time luckily got my grades and if you want to see me get my grades you can watch my results day video which is my first video that i ever posted on this channel crazy man how long it's been since then i got my place at ucl and i was really happy and so was my mama as you can see by the video but yeah um i just want to say that obviously the journey into medicine isn't easy and even to this day one of the hardest processes i've personally been through but i just want to state that everyone's journey is different some people take gap years some people do other degrees before some people go straight yeah i'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason like for example with my process maybe my ucat wasn't as high as i wanted it to be but then again if my ucat had been crazy high it would have completely changed the universities i applied to i might have not even applied to any bmat unis in the end because i was trying to be strategic but then I wouldn't be where I am now. Everything happens so that you are put in a place such that you can be the best doctor that you're gonna be. Yeah, it really is just trust the process, you know what I mean? And if you want it bad enough, like it will come to you, but just in your own time. Is the process of getting into medicine harder than medical school itself? A second year exams would say different, <laughs> but it was still hard, you know what I mean? So yeah died but thanks guys so much for watching the video i hope it gave you a little bit of insight and yeah hope you can see you watch more videos Bye.